Hey everyone, welcome back to Critharo. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to combine Cinti sidekicks with the game animation sample template provided by Unreal Engine. So let's go ahead and import these Cinti sidekick models from Unity over into our Unreal Engine and actually get this working with a character. So over in my game animation sample template, I'm going to just right click and create a new folder and call this Cinti. I'm going to go ahead and open this folder and this is where I'm going to be importing contents over from Unity into Unreal Engine and so on. And now with Unity open, you can see that I have my Sinti sidekick characters, and then we have fantasy knights, skeletons, goblin fighters, and so on. I'm just going to go ahead and go into my resources folder. And the first thing that I personally like to do is just import over my textures, my base model, and all of that. So let's go ahead and do that. So let me actually split my screen. So I'm going to have Unity on the right side and Unreal Engine on the left. All right, so I'm gonna right click on my resources folder and click show in Explorer. So I'll head inside the resources folder and then go into textures. And then I'm gonna sort by the type and I only wanna import the PNGs. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and just import these PNGs like so and drag this into my Cinti folder. So now we see all these and I'm gonna actually just create a new folder called texture. And then I'll go ahead and drag these in there. And what I want to do is just go ahead in my textures and open that T underscore color map. And when you scroll in, you're going to see it does look pretty blurry. So I want to change that. So I want to search for filter and change it from default to nearest. And now it looks really crispy clear. And that's exactly what we want. And I'll just right click and create a material and I'll call this M underscore color map. And now I'll go back up to my resources folder. And then I want to go ahead and click meshes. And I'm going to look for species and I'm only going to be importing the humans in this video. And now I'll go up to my resources folder and then I want to go into meshes. And over here we have this SK base model dot FPX. This is going to be our main Cinti character that we're going to be rigging the bones into. And basically this SK base model is what we're going to be using to attach our equipment to. So I'm going to go ahead and just drag the SK base model over up to my Cinti folder like so. So I'll go ahead and drag this in and make sure uh, everything looks good. So I'll go ahead and click import just to test it out and hit control shift S. You're going to see there's no material on this and that's totally fine. And now I have my character inside. He looks really nice, but he has no materials. But let's go ahead and actually just uh, fix that up. And now I'll go ahead and hit control shift save. And I want to delete this color material that got imported with it and replace it with that color map. So I'm going to look for that uh, M underscore color map like so and click replace references and then I'll click OK. So that'll go ahead and delete it and apply this material to this character like so. And now he looks a little better, but his eyes are still red. But yeah, we'll go ahead and leave this for now. At least it does look a lot better. So now I'll go ahead and go import some meshes. So the first one that I actually want to do is import the human meshes so we can make this character uh, pretty modular. So I'll go into the meshes tab and then click species and then go to human. And then now we have all these humanoid uh, looking characters. And I actually want to just right click on humans over in show and explorer and then click into humans. And now I want to import all the FBXs all the FBX models into my uh, into Unreal Engine. So I'm going to look for all the FBX and then instant T. I'm going to right click and create a new folder and call this humans just to match what uh, Cinti's naming assets are in Unity. And now I'll scroll down to the bottom, select the last FBX, drag all of these in. So there's 99 pieces for humans. And then I want to go ahead and scroll down and select the skeleton, which is going to be the base SK base model skeleton like so and go ahead and hit import and it's going to import all of these one by one i'm going to go ahead and just click uh yes and so on just let these import in and now with all of these imported i'm going to hit Control shift s to save all and what i want to do is actually uh i like this base color label so when i drag this over you can see that like my eye is now the red part's gone and it just looks a lot more crispier so i'm actually going to use the base color labels one as my main materials. I'm going to go ahead and hit create material M underscore base color one, and then hit control shift S to save all. And what I want to do is actually delete all the materials that we see here, except for that base color O one. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure you save it all. So it has a reference that can be replaced. So I'm going to highlight all of these. Actually, I need to 
go down even more, highlight all of these and uncheck that M underscore base color one that I created. And now you'll see that when you scroll down, all these pieces are gray. But when I go ahead and hit delete, it's gonna ask me to replace the reference with that material I just created. And now on the bottom left here, it says delete the assets and update the references. And I'm gonna go ahead and select that M underscore base color one, like so. Make sure you are not deleting any anything else other than materials. So just control click on this texture if you accidentally do highlight this. And then I'll go ahead and click replace references. And now we're gonna slowly see all of these update as soon as it is done. So it deleted all of it and we're gonna go ahead and save over it. And now all of these do have colors to them. So when you scroll down and see these, you'll see that they have their appropriate brown, white, blue, red, any sort of color that it was initially assigned to by default. So now that we have these human pieces imported, I wanna go ahead and import some pieces of armor. So I'm just gonna go back up to my meshes folder, go to outfits and select fantasy knights. And I wanna import all the FBX and pretty much do the same thing here that we did with our humans. And I'm gonna right click, create a new folder, call this fantasy knights. Go ahead and head into it and then just import all the FBXs that we see. We're gonna repeat this exact same process that we did for humans. And I'm gonna scroll down until I see my skeleton and select the same base model skeleton that we selected before. And then I'll go ahead and click import. And now I'm gonna wait for all of these to import and delete the material and replace the one with the appropriate one. In this case, it is the sci-fi soldier color one, no label uh, from what I've tested before in my previous tutorials. And we can actually just check this, uh, test this out right now. So I'll go ahead and drag this out. Actually, this looks fine to me. So I'll drag in this helmet. So you can see it's kind of like this boring statue. It kind of looks like a uh, like clay material. And when I drag this sci-fi soldier onto it, it becomes gray with a little hint of purple on the eyes like it's supposed to. And now with all of those imported, I'm going to go ahead and actually just save all and select all the materials that I want deleted. So there's just a ton and ton and ton of materials. I'm sure there's an easy easier way to do this when you actually import these models. But let's go ahead and select all, click delete, and then we're gonna replace it with this Sci-Fi Soldier Color 01. And then I'll go ahead and select that reference and click replace references like so. And then after that's done, I'm gonna click save selected and we're gonna see all the assets update in our content browser like so. So we see the cape with the appropriate color uh, the armor pieces, the backpacks, and so on. Just a lot and lot going on here. So now that we have all that, I can go ahead and close Unity and full screen my Unreal Engine just so it's easier to see. And I'll also go ahead and hit Control Shift W to increase the UI a bit. So I'll do like something like 1.1, just so it's a bit more readable. And now from here, retargeting to the game animation sample character is a breeze. So what we're gonna do first is head over to blueprints and then I'm gonna go into my retargeted characters. I'm gonna go ahead and just duplicate this CBP sandbox character Manny by hitting control D or you can right click and duplicate. I'm gonna call this CBP underscore Cinti and I'll double click to open this up. And what I wanna do is change the Manny to Cinti and you don't have to change the text but I like to do it for organization purposes. And now what I want to do is actually change the skeletal mesh asset to the base model character like so. You're going to you're not going to see any changes just yet, but when I go ahead and close this and actually just reopen this, then you'll see that the character is uh just doing his little stick figure, which is totally fine. And what I want to do next is actually go ahead and I need a retargeter so our ABP generic retargeter can uh, tell can transfer our information into our SK base model. So what I wanna do is actually go up to this anim class that says ABP generic retargeter. I'm gonna go up one level to where it says ABP sandbox character. I'm gonna right click and click retarget animations. And all I need to do for this is select the target skeletal mesh to that base model. And I don't need to select any animations. I can just click export retarget assets. This will create an auto retargeter for us to help us transfer that information like so. And then I'm gonna go into my Cindy folder and then I'll create a new folder and call this, uh, let's say gasp and call this anims or actually, and I'll just call this retargeter and I'll go ahead and click export. And now in my folder, I have this IK auto retargeter and this RTG underscore auto generated. When I go ahead and open this, you can see that the Cinti character and the ABP and the uh, game animation sample mini are aligned. And I'll go ahead and hit control 
S to save this and exit out of this. And I'm gonna rename this to something like RTG underscore Cinti, like so. Make sure you copy this name because this is gonna be what's used in our component for our mesh and in our animation blueprint itself. So now when I go back to the blueprints folder, I'm gonna go into retargeted characters and open up the ABP generic retarget. On the right side, we're gonna have the IK retargeter map. This is telling us what character is gonna transfer the information of animations to. So for example, we have our main orange looking mannequin to the UE4 mannequin. And then we also have it for Echo. And we also have it for Twin Blast and the MetaHuman and so on. That's why you can play the game animation sample with so many characters. And from here, I'm gonna go ahead and add our IK retargeter map by clicking on this plus sign and just typing in the name word for word or letter for letter in this case, which is RTG underscore Cinti and selecting RTG underscore Cinti like so. Now the name of this retargeter map will have to go in our CBP Cinti. So I'm gonna go ahead and head back to our character after compiling and saving, go into Cinti and you're gonna see he's doing a weird pose. That's not what we want. I'm gonna scroll down until we see components. And now under component tag, I'm gonna go ahead and change this RTG UEFN to UE5 mannequin to RTG Cinti, click enter. And now you're gonna see our character is kind of popping his chest out and standing exactly how it is, how he normally is supposed to. And now when I go ahead and go back to the default level, I'm gonna go ahead and to my world settings and change my default pawn class to that Cinti character like so. And now I'll go ahead and hit play and we can see our character is now live and working so we're just going to ignore that guy uh, i am not sure what he's been drinking but probably just a little bit too much and now our cinti character is moving flawlessly with the game animation sample template as wanted and i have to actually change the material because it's back to that red-eyed looking character so let me go ahead and do that real quick uh let's go ahead and scroll up to yeah i don't want the color map i actually want the uh the sci-fi soldier one so i'll go ahead and just just going to go ahead and select that here so now he looks a bit better and what i want to do is actually just i can go ahead and add some skeletal meshes to my character so i'm going to add a couple things for fan from the fantasy knights just to make it look cool but i would recommend making a equipment system for your game and so on unless you're not you're never going to have loot in your game which is also totally fine in order to add armor to your character we just need to root it under the main mesh itself so i'm going to select the mesh and click add under component and look for a skeletal mesh and because i have the name copied or selected in the browser it did select my chest piece already but from here all i need to do is you're going to see that it's a very still piece i need to select the same anim class that i'm using for my Cinti character which is the abp generic retargeter so i'll go ahead and select the abp generic retarget and then i also need to change that component tag to match the rtg underscore Cinti. so i'll go ahead and type in rtg underscore Cinti like so and now you'll see that my character looks like he is wearing the armor piece itself and it does match exactly what the character is doing so if i go ahead and hit play you're going to see that all the animations kind of align with what my character is doing my chest piece is still on uh, it doesn't fall off or anything and it looks really cool so now let's get an armored modular guy up in here and just make him look really nice so i'll go ahead and add some more armor pieces and just duplicate these and change the mesh and so on and now i've gone ahead and just added quite a few armor pieces and let's go ahead and hit our default level and play and now you can see my armored fantasy knight character is able to run around and I can just go ahead and climb and do all the cool things that comes with this template. And that pretty much covers today's tutorial. Thanks for watching Code of the Rope. Like, subscribe, comment what you want to see next. I'll see you in the next video. And thanks for watching.